All right. <clears throat> well, here we are again. Gold numbers time. Yes, we are. Um, yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, <clears throat> just kind of a preface to what I want to talk about today is, is that uh, some of you have known um, of, uh, know that I've kind of lately gotten onto a sales group on the Facebook stuff, all right? Yeah, Tom's been enjoying himself. Where I've been having an absolute blast because uh, there's a lot of really bad salespeople out there. So, yes. you know, so I see people, you know, doing these things that seem to do absolutely everything to destroy their business. And the problem is, you know, I don't know if you guys know, okay, so back in the 80s, from what I remember, back in the 80s, I sold real estate. <laughs> from what you remember? From what I remember. Um, I was too young to forget the 80s. I hate you. <laughs> I, you know, I was a stockbroker and I, you know, other kinds of little sales jobs. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing is, they're giving, you know, in the 1980s, they gave advice that was from the 1950s and 60s. All right. And they're still giving the same advice today. And they've totally written off any kind of brain research, any kind of... Uh, updating of information or even the fact that the market has changed completely the okay? consumer has changed and our culture has changed and yeah. the internet has really changed everything even more yeah I mean the internet has made it to where guess what everything about you your company your product and your price is all out there okay mm -hmm. so you know the whole dynamic has completely changed and what has happened is sale selling and this is, you know, and everything else has become more of a relationship business than right. a, I'm going to give you the facts and figures and price, and then I'm going to push you until you say yes. Okay? So <clears throat> the whole idea is that, you know, whether it be business, personal relationships, selling, mm -hmm. or anything, the biggest thing you can have, even when you're in your job, you guys have like regular jobs that you go to every day and you have to work with a bunch of people in the mm -hmm. office. And the reality is this, that your relationships will dictate your success. All right. And the reason that I got onto this is that trust is one of the biggest things that will sabotage that relationship or mm -hmm. enhance it in a really quick way. Right. You no, know, it's true. It is. And, and the faster that somebody trusts you, the better. So let me give you an example. So over the weekend, or over last week, um, I was sitting around Facebook, and this little ad comes up for a like, yard sale group that I belong to that's here locally. And they want to sell kitchen cabinets, which we're looking for for a house that we're remodeling. and Appliances. And appliances, mm -hmm. okay. And... The price was just absolutely ridiculous. It's like seven grand worth of stuff for 900 bucks. So, you know, we were all over that. All right. So we go down there, and it's in a very wealthy neighborhood. Houses, I'm well, not very wealthy, but wealthy enough. Houses in the six, seven thousand, hundred thousand dollar yeah. range. All right. And you go in, and the house is vacant. We go in, we look at what we do. <clears throat> okay. We talk to the people. Of course, we have fairly good initial rapport. I send mm -hmm. her in first, and people like her, and that gets me rapport. <laughs> it's my new rapport <laughs> technique. Send Kim in first. Um, <laughs> so everybody needs to buy one of these, all right, or at least earn one. Um, I've done neither. I don't, that's, that's a whole other story. Looking like a ragamuffin, just <laughs> yeah. a mess. I yeah. mean, not dressed up nicely or anything. Yes, the I Kim, exactly. Yeah. So... <clears throat> So we go in there and we do all our measurements and we're figuring it out. And there's this one set of cabinets that they wanted, they didn't want to give us. They promised them to a friend. And by the time it was done, we were talking to them and, you know, we're really honestly, sincerely saying, I'm really, really sorry. I would love to buy all this yeah. stuff, but without this set of cabinets, it just does not work. Right? It's just not going to fit. And they, it would took no time whatsoever to where they just said, okay, just take them. Yeah. Okay. Screw my friend. Uh, <laughs> we want money to heck with my friend. So. <clears throat> You know, the, in that instant, okay, in those few moments that we, where we sat down and we did mm -hmm. some things and we, got, we built a relationship. Right. All right, so this goes on for a day. The next day we go there and the guy has his dog, which is this beauty, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Siberian Husky, okay? Sorry, I went all crazy. My, my crazy Pittsburgh. For you a went second. all Pittsburgh. So, um, Hold on. so anyway, the, uh, 
you know, so we bond over the, he's like, oh, do you mind if my dog is here? And it's like, no, because it's a huge vacant house. Mm-hmm. All right. So, you know, then it comes to the next day and he says he's, he's going to meet us and he doesn't. All right. But instead he says, look, here's the code to the front door. Just use that to get in and I'll be there in a couple hours. Yeah. We went in a very short period of time from total strangers to somebody that trusted us the, with the code to a six or $700,000 house. Okay, really, really quickly. Now, the things that people say about trust is it's like you have to earn trust. You have to go so through time and behaviors and proving yourself and proving that you're reliable and proving yourself. And guess what? Oh, by the way, the best part about this, we still even haven't finished paying him yet. No, and we have everything <laughs> except for a few cabinets. Yeah, okay, so, you know, and also have permission we're going to go back today and take everything else that we, that we want. And pay him later. And pay him later, okay? <laughs> Look, folks. You cannot buy, beg, steal, manipulate people into this kind of trust. You have to, well, you can, so we're going to teach you how to do that, yeah. but other than the buying and begging part. But you get the idea. <laughs> this kind of instantaneous feeling that people get that they can trust you is worth, there's no price tag for it. There is actually no price tag for it. I mean, it is the key. To everything. If someone doesn't trust you, yeah. you are stuck. You're stuck with basically begging, borrowing, stealing, mm-hmm. bribing. You know, basically how people sell stuff when they suck at it. Right. They start discounting their price. They start, you know, <clears throat> giving you bonuses. They start washing your car, and, you know, doing you personal favors. And you're, mm-hmm. you know, coming over and doing your laundry and sorting your underwear. You know, they'll do anything to gain that level of trust. Right. And women are better at it, but it's not be- for the reason mm-hmm. you think. It's not because we're cute. It's not because, I mean, this, the kid we're talking about is young enough to be my son. Easily. All right. We walk in in sweatpants and jackets and just looking a mess. Because why would I dress up or put on makeup mm-hmm. or comb my hair? Giving away too much there. Yeah. For, um, <laughs> or, or not smell bad. <laughs> or right do now. anything to go buy cabinets, right? But I think the reason women are better at it is not because we're women. It's because of certain areas that we're, and we'll talk about it, mm-hmm. certain things we're willing to do which men hold back on because they have to be macho, masculine yep. men and mm-hmm. have that same, that kind of little dance that men do to see who's in charge. Yeah. And that really hurts men in certain situations. Um, and, mm-hmm. and but we'll talk. I mean, it doesn't mean you can't go back and forth. It doesn't mean you're setting yourself as the subordinate omega dog. Yeah. But it does mean that if you're always vying for that alpha position and doing that dance and unwilling mm-hmm. to use certain states or go into certain states, then yeah, you are breaking trust. And it's not that women are better at it; it's that men are breaking trust. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, hit. I only have half of you. <laughs> I want full Kim. Okay. All right. So. Uh, yeah. Let me, and I'm going to give you the same warning that I give everybody when we teach you anchoring, okay? Warning. When someone trusts you, if you violate that trust, it is massively bad. <laughs> is that what, I mean, it, well, they it come can be so much you. worse than anything else. <sighs> it's the difference between breaking, if someone, if someone who you didn't trust does something to you, mm-hmm. right? And you go, well, okay. My bad, I shouldn't have done that, or I shouldn't have not made them pay up front. Mm -hmm. But once you've built the trust, and we did build a relationship and trust on purpose, so we could do what we needed to do in an easy manner, then he'll come after you, okay? Mm -hmm. He knows where I live. He knows my neighbors. Yeah. Um, And not purpose, just Just the amount of information. I found that out after building a relationship with him. I know what church he goes to. There's a lot of information. Yeah, if crazy stuff. you break the trust at that point, the person might come after you. Not yes. a ne- but tell your friends, find out, put on the internet, whatever. So you yeah. do have to be careful if you build trust yeah. and then completely break it. You know, plus, once you break it, you have to, mm-hmm. uh, you have to work three times as hard, ten times as hard to get it back. Okay? Right. So the whole idea is, you know... <clears throat> We're going to teach you to do something that's super powerful. And the way we, you know, and it's going to seem really, really simple because it kind of is. 
or we made it, made it in a simple way where you can do this this week and get immediate results, all mm -hmm. right? Um, the other thing is this. Let me say that, that you know, when you violate someone's trust, tr the trust is like the most valuable thing someone can give you, okay? They can give you money. They can give you their dog, please. Um, the, they can give you... You're not giving away my dog. It's in my spot. I mean, <laughs> they can give you anything, okay? When you have someone's trust, you have the most valuable thing that they have to offer you, all right? And you have to get in that mindset. This is their, their, their thing. They are opening themselves up. They're making themselves very vulnerable to you mm -hmm. by giving you that trust, okay? <clears throat> Does that make sense? Because I want you to really understand that. So what we did is we came up with... Five things that can build trust. And when I talk about building trust, I'm talking about within the first five or ten minutes of meeting someone. All right? Five or ten minutes. Boom. And, you know, you're, they're not going to, like, give you the keys to their house. Apparently, that only takes a day. But, <laughs> all right? Um, but they're going to have, you know, that good feeling about you. You know, mm -hmm. that, that you're someone that they can actually deal with. Right. All right? <clears throat> um. You know, and, and well, this is a good point. This can be used on people you already know mm -hmm. who think you're a really, you know, creepy, sketchy little character. But, <laughs> no, but actually to build more <laughs> trust. Yeah. And actually, it's funny because uh, he mentions that, and it is something that we actually worked on a little bit a week or so ago, and he's getting really good results with right. it. Right. And the thing about that is it's a great question because not only can you use it later on, but in the natural progression of relationships, it is something that happens later on, right? It just happens to be when you do it with purpose and do certain things, mm -hmm. you accelerate the process. So, yes, you can still purposely, without it organically happening, do it later on and get the person to trust you. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and the cool part about trust is this. Once you have that and it firms up, people want to trust you. They don't want to distrust you because distrusting you is a very emotional, horrible thing. Okay, and they mm -hmm. don't want. They want to maintain that trust. And once you've got it, you know, it's very, very hard. It's not very hard, but, you know, you can get away with things, little things that other people couldn't. Things right. that would trigger distrust and suspicion that other people couldn't. Okay? For instance, like we need to go over and finish picking up these cabinets after, this, after the broadcast here. And <clears throat> he says, well, can you come back, you know, by tomorrow night? And I'm like, no, we're going to do it this afternoon. All right, we'll be there around 3. Mm -hmm. Okay? If that's okay, you know, and he's like, well, that's all right. And it's like, you know, I said, look, we'll be there for a little while. So I don't know what, I never found out what tomorrow night meant, but it was like, you know, anybody else that might trigger suspicion, but with us, it went really, really well. So right. anyway, so let me get to the first thing. 